What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P. Definitely got a fun one for you guys today. We're going to be revisiting Razer's first gaming peripherals. With the 1999 release of the Razer Boomslang, their first gaming mouse, and then in 2006 they dropped the Razer Tarantula, which for an older keyboard has some pretty damn good features. So we're just going to, you know, run through them both, talk about them, show off their features, and pretty much, you know, just be in awe of how different things are today. So first up, the Razer Boomslang. 20 years old at this point, which is crazy. Released in 1999. I picked this up on eBay for $85, which is funny because this released for $100. And believe it or not, you can still buy these on eBay for like 200 bucks and up. So I got a pretty good deal. And with that being said, for being so old, you can see the condition here is great. The box is in good shape. It still came with their collector's tin, which is a really cool kind of, you know, inclusion to have a mouse included in. We're not getting just the cardboard box like we do now. And with the name Boomslang, it is named after a snake, which as you can tell is kind of Razor's thing for the past how many years. So it started right here from the beginning. Now the shape is definitely bizarre. When I first got it and held it, I didn't know really how to hold it. I didn't know what grip would be appropriate for this because it's just wide and super slim. Like this is one of the shortest mice I've used in terms of height. It's just flat, it's a, it's a pancake. But let's talk about the buttons here because there's five. And actually at the time this released, this has some things that no other mice had. Obviously I have your left and right clicks, which are huge. A very tactile 36 step scroll wheel, which again was unheard of in 1999. And also the fact you can click the scroll wheel in. And then with it being a symmetrical ambidextrous design, integrated on the waistline of the mouse, you have a left and right button as well. That's what kind of threw me off when I first held it, because I didn't know if my thumb and ring finger was supposed to sit in there or what, but it's actually not bad placement. Now when it first released, it came in two different versions, uh, pretty much being different shells and different sensors. There was like an all black one, and then this green one here is the one with the higher sensor. But I really like how the shell is translucent, you kind of see through. Pretty unique, but very Y2K looking. Now speaking of that sensor, you'll see underneath the mouse is one of those old, you know, classic trackball mice here underneath where there's an actual ball. You know, I grew up with mice with the trackballs in it. Kids today might not have any idea what's going on here, but I couldn't really find any information on the exact sensor itself. It just says it's a Karina proprietary. So I guess Karina was a company who would, you know, make the sensors. The sensor goes up to 2000 DPI. And some other things before we move on that I wanted to note is both the left and right clicks and the entire accent around the backside and just the sides of the mouse is this super grippy rubber material. But having the mechanical ball was just a crazy throwback and spoiler, I can't really game well with this anymore. Now, due to that integrated ball, this is Razer's heaviest mice even to today. It comes in at 150 grams, and a lot of that is also in the cable because the cable itself super just clunky and thick. So I'm actually thinking of possibly paracording this for no reason at all, but just to do it. You can see we do have these sort of white clearish mouse feet underneath, but just due to the weight of the mouse and the actual mechanical ball inside, this thing does not glide on anything whatsoever. As you can see, since it is so back heavy, whenever I kind of like give it a flick and a toss, it just spins out because it's just a lot of junk in that trunk. And just showing you a comparison to my Razer Viper Ultimate and how different that is, how much more sleek and lightweight. And with their like hyperglide equivalents on the bottom, that thing just coasts. We'll do some gaming on the boom slang in a minute, but first just going back to the keyboard. What if I told you the 2006 Tarantula had integrated LED lights, an integrated wrist rest, dedicated multimedia keys, 10 macro keys, and two USB patch throughs? I know I wouldn't have believed it, so I had to check it out myself. I picked the tarantula up on eBay for $35, but it came from Russia. So there's probably some uh, lots of Counter-Strike being played on this bad boy. That being said, it was also crazy dirty, crumbs, gunk, all in it. So I had to give it a good alcohol bath, but that wasn't gonna stop me from checking it out. So it's definitely a large keyboard, as you can see, built-in wrist rests. It's all plastic, glossy plastic as well, so ugh. There is some sort of dock up top that I'm not really sure what it's used for. I assume they had plans to release some sort of like add-ons and stuff for here, but as of right now, I have no idea. But let's check it out, because on the left side, we have L1 through L5, which is their five left side macro keys. 
a home button and a sleep button, which could put your PC to sleep or just bring up the home menu. On the bottom of the left side is a rotate button, which rotates your screen 90 degrees. So if you have like a vertical monitor, a zoom in and out for zooming in and out of like a browser, plus a 100% button, which just brings it back to 100%. And then back on the right side, five more R1 through R5 keys for the five right side macros, as well as all the volume control buttons. My dedicated music button, which brings up like iTunes and stuff like that not Spotify, unfortunately. Pause and play, stop, forward track, back track, a shuffle button, volume up and down, and a mute. And these actual multimedia keys do work in Spotify, just that single like music button can't bring up the program. And then on the back side, you have your two USB pass-throughs, plus a headphone jack and a microphone jack. All of that in 2006. 90% of keyboards today don't even have that stuff built in. Now at the time, 15 years ago, the mechanical switches we have now in keyboards were not the norm whatsoever. But what was is the rubber dome switches. That's what was going on. And unfortunately, that's what we have inside of here. You know we're gonna do a sound test. All right, so when it came to gaming, I replaced my current peripherals on my desk, and man, how the times have changed. The keyboard was working 100%, so I had no issues with that. Obviously, I've tested rubber dome switches in the past, so gaming on this was just fine, but that mechanical trackball in the boom slang was not easy to get used to at all. Not only was it just too heavy for what I'm used to with the Viper Ultimate, it's just the trackball on my cloth mouse pad. It didn't get along. It was so hard to get used to the sensor and just how that works. But obviously, at the time when this came out in 1999, it was still groundbreaking. The design, the super tactile scroll wheel, which also acted as a button, and those two side buttons. In stock out of the box, the left side button is actually an on-the-fly DPI changer. So you hold this in, and then with the scroll wheel, you can change your DPI on the fly, which again, for 1999, is pretty cool. But what is super impressive is there's actually current drivers supported by Razer even today. I went over to the website and they were both there under their mouse and keyboard category. And it's funny to get a glimpse at how old the software just looks compared to today. So there's nothing crazy with the software. Again, going in, you can remap those five buttons, change the sensitivity of the scroll wheel. But one thing I thought was interesting was the fact that there was no dedicated DPI like levels to change. Like you couldn't change this to 100 or 200 all the way up to 2000. It was just sensitivity levels. But just man, the fact that they still have this active so you can download it today is impressive. Software from 20 years ago is still being supported. And same thing from the tarantula, from remapping buttons, creating macros, all here. So it's funny just seeing how big and feature-ridden this keyboard was compared to today with the more compact optomechanical switches and stuff. And then with my Razer Viper Ultimate, which is my main mouse, super lightweight, one of my favorite out there, compared to the 1999 boom slang just so different in shape design everything but yeah gaming with this was not easy in the slightest the trackball on the bottom just not something i can get used to um, i think the grip although at first it was you know just super bizarre it wasn't that bad once you started to you know play it with it for a bit um and i really like the integrated side buttons here like going underneath the body it's just where my thumb naturally sits but man what a what a difference 20 years makes so I thought it'd be fun to revisit the 1999 Razer Boomslang and the 2006 Razer Tarantula, Razer's first gaming mouse and keyboard. If you liked this video, thought it was interesting, let me know. Give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.